It's raining outside because of course, it's summer now. So instead of going out and doing something interesting out there, we're gonna be in here. We're gonna use Photoshop and Lightroom to do something a little bit extra creative. I actually went out and took a shot of a puddle, just an ordinary puddle in the rain. Uh, we're gonna use Photoshop to create an interesting photo. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. Let's dive into it. It's tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We have missed a couple of weeks, I'm not gonna lie to you, but we're back into it. We're doing this creative shot of a puddle. We're gonna Photoshop some, some other bits in there. We're just gonna dive straight into it. I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do. So this is the shot of the puddle that I've got here. I've just brought it into Lightroom. We're gonna do a very, very basic edit in Lightroom. Then we're gonna bring it to Photoshop and we're gonna do all the fun stuff. So first of all, I just wanna give this a crop because I don't think we need this part of the street up here. In fact, that's gonna make it harder in Photoshop to actually change this image dramatically. So I'm gonna give it a four by five crop. I'm just gonna bring this down and I think that's absolutely fine. So I think just like that, we've got the actual puddle there. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, bring those highlights down, shadow it up a little bit, bit of texture, bit of clarity. I'm not gonna go too mad with it because I don't wanna restrict too much what I can do when we take it into Photoshop. And what I mean by that basically is if I go too crazy with the color grading or anything like that here, then we have already applied a particular style to the photo, which restricts what we can do once we're in Photoshop with regards to the style there. So I'm not gonna to do too much. I am just gonna come down to the calibration tab here and just give it a little bit of a teal and orange kind of vibe, just a touch, just the yellows really in these double yellow lines here. Now I'm just gonna right click it. I'm gonna click edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021. It's gonna open Photoshop for me and add this in there, which is gonna be fantastic. Now what we're essentially going to do is change this photo from this relatively boring puddle photo here into a photo that has an interesting reflection, kind of a cityscape reflection. All you need to do for this to work is have a photo of any puddle. That's absolutely fine, any puddle will do. And then another photo kind of looking up at pretty much any cityscape kind of situation that you want to use. So for this one, I've got obviously my puddle photo. Let's bring in the cityscape photo as well. So I've got a few different photos that we could use here, but the one that I am going to use I think we're gonna go for this one. I think that's gonna work particularly well. I think it, it's a nice shot anyway, and then I think it's gonna work as a reflection. So I've just dragged it onto this. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so it fills the actual photo here. Let's drag that down just a touch as well. And I'm just gonna click the tick there to actually place it. Now I'm gonna drag that underneath my background. I can't do that though because I need to unlock the background. I'm gonna drag it underneath my background. And then we're gonna do something very, very simple. We're just going to apply a layer mask to the puddle photo. So we do that by just selecting the layer here, coming down to this icon, which creates a layer mask. And if you've seen any of our other videos where we talk about layer masks, anything, if it's all white, everything's visible. And then you can paint black on to actually remove parts of the image. You can paint white on to bring back part of the image. So it's a really easy way of, of kind of masking and hiding parts of the photo. And essentially that's all we need to do. We need to mask parts of these this puddle here. So I'm gonna click on the layer mask. I've got my brush selected and I need to use black to paint. So I can press X just to switch to black from white. And with a relatively hard brush, about 50%. So you can hold Alt, right click and hold and just move the mouse up and down to change the hardness. I'm gonna get to about 50% hardness. Make that a bit smaller. Again, you can hold Alt, right click and hold and then drag left or right to make the brush bigger or smaller. And we're just gonna paint the black onto this puddle here. Now, if you want, I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that. I'm gonna bring the flow down a bit to about, about 60%. That means we can, we can build up our painting on there. So we start off with painting on essentially a 60% opacity, but if we go back over it, it'll build that up. So let's begin by just painting this on over the puddle. We can change the brush size a little bit as we go to keep it about right. Let's just paint that in there. And it's just a matter of trying to get it along those edges without making it too obvious. Again, with the double yellow line here, we just wanna go right up against it we're not gonna go over it for now. Let's just fill in this middle part here with a slightly bigger brush. We're gonna come back to those W lines in a moment, but let's, for the time being, let's just do 
some of these other bits here. Let's just fill in some of these smaller areas like this. And we might end up coming back and undoing some of this or, or redoing it or anything like that. And that's the beauty of the layer mask is you really have control over how much is kind of affected and you can go back and change things. And there we go. So essentially, we've painted in our reflection there rather than what we had before. There's a couple of bits we might need to tidy up, like just there. But I'm pretty happy with that. You can hold Alt and use the mouse wheel to actually zoom in and out. Uh, but it's not too bad. I think it's I think it's okay. Let's just paint some of these areas in that we might want to use. And we might even want to use a, a softer brush, so down to 0% just to kind of feather that out a little bit and make it a little less harsh. Okay, so I think we've got a reasonably good kind of reflection here that we've created. Let's just come in and do this one other bit up here, otherwise that's gonna, that's gonna stand out to me. Maybe this bit as well. There we go. And we've got a reasonably good kind of selection here of this reflection. Obviously this isn't done, you know, we need to do a few more bits to actually make this a little bit more believable, but we're doing well here so far, I think. We've got a good kind of selection already. So first thing we can do is just come here to an adjustment layer so we can create a new adjustment layer. Let's go for curves. Now, the first thing that I notice when I look at this is that the reflection is definitely a lot more blue than the actual puddle photo. And that's probably because the white balance is different. So let's just drag this curves layer down so it's only on top of the actual reflection layer here, the cityscape. And let's come up to the curves. Let's first of all, let's darken it a little bit with just the RGB curve, just by just by creating a point in the center and bringing that down. Then let's come down to the blue channel. Let's bring that down a little bit as well. And I think that's gonna help. I think that does help. We could even bring the greens down a touch, maybe. I think that helps. We can also come here to another adjustment layer and go for color balance. I think that's gonna help. We can bring towards the yellows a little bit, maybe towards the greens a touch. I think that helps a little bit. We can come back and adjust these as we go as well. Now, something we can do to really help marry these two different images together in this one composite is to actually apply a color grade or contrast or anything like that to the whole image so both parts of it as one whole. That's only gonna to help to kind of glue everything together. So the first thing we're gonna do is just add a curves layer. So let's come down here to adjustment layer, curves, and let's bring the shadows down a little bit and the highlights up. That's gonna add a bit of contrast to the image, which I think is gonna help because it's adding contrast across the whole thing. And the second thing we can do is add a color grade. So let's come down here to adjustment layer, color lookup. This is essentially gonna add a LUT so uh, it's essentially like a, a color grade, a ready-made color grade that we're gonna slap on the whole image. Let's go load 3D LUT. There's loads that come with Photoshop. You can also make your own. We can go into that at some point as well, but let's just go for this one. Let's go teal orange plus contrast. And that immediately adds a huge color grade to this photo, but we can bring that opacity down. Let's bring it down to about, to about 38%, 40%. Let's do it something like that. We can turn that off, turn that back on. And you can see that immediately marries the two elements together in terms of kind of color grading the whole image. It really just helps glue everything together, which is really handy. So next thing we might want to do, you know, you might be happy with that. You might think, okay, great, that looks that looks fine. That's kind of a, a done deal. And you could move on, you could post that on Instagram, you could do whatever you want to do with it. I think that's an interesting creative photo just by itself. But you might want to add some texture to the water of this puddle. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you at least two different ways that we can do that. I've been kind of fooling around with these a little bit. So let's have a look. So first of all, we've got our layer down here. This is the reflection layer. Let's go ahead and right click it. Let's go convert to smart object. Now that's gonna make this kind of able to be edited in terms of things like filters and blurs and all that kind of stuff, but we can go back. So we're not applying it destructively. We can actually go back after we've done it and we can edit them and all that kind of stuff. So it's a way of working non-destructively that is very important in Photoshop. So now that we've done that, we can come up here to filter. Let's go to blur and let's go to motion blur. Now let's set the angle to about 90 degrees. And the distance, let's make that about 30. See how that looks. Let's click okay. And you can see that applies a bit of a blur to the 
to the image there. If we can, we can turn that off and turn that back on. Now, for me personally, that doesn't work as well because essentially you're blurring the image and that's not really the idea here. We want to have a nice image and we want to make it look like it's water rather than just sort of blurred. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those filters off. So let's turn those off there. And essentially we're going to do something a little bit different. Now, before we started, I actually downloaded a rain kind of puddle texture. Now, so it's just a free texture. I just Googled it. You can download it anyway. You like if you just Google uh, rain puddle texture, you'll find a free texture that you can pop on there. So let's go ahead and add that onto the photo. And I can literally just drag that on like so. Now it's not big enough, so we're going to have to make it a little bit bigger. Let's do that like this. And because it's already underneath the actual puzzle photo, we don't have to worry about masking. It's all kind of taken care of, which is great. Now, this is another way that we can kind of make this look a little bit more like water. But obviously, at the moment, you can't see the actual reflection photo, the cityscape photo, which is problematic. So we need to change the blending mode. We need to do a few bits to make this work. So first of all, we can change the blending mode to something like darker color which is going to work relatively well. But it still doesn't look right because the actual image isn't distorted in any way. So let's create a layer mask for this one as well. Let's just actually press Control I to make that entirely black. And then using a white brush, we can paint in certain areas. So for example, maybe up here, we've got one water droplet. Maybe over here, we've got something as well. And maybe down here, we'll pop something in there. Now, what we can do next, we need to actually make a bit of a displacement map for the reflection. Now, don't worry, that sounds a bit intense, but it's really not too bad. What we're going to do, we're going to come up here to File, New, and we're going to make a new uh, file in Photoshop where we're going to create a displacement map. It's very easy, don't worry about it. We're going to go through it, and then we can apply that to the photo to kind of displace that reflection as well, as if it was water. Now, let's make the width, let's say 1,000, and the height, let's make that 2,000. And what we're going to do, we're just going to make a new solid color, just in black there. And then we're going to come up here to filter, noise, add noise. We don't have to worry about it being a smart object. We'll just click rasterize. And what we're going to do is we're going to just make it the maximum amount, 400%. And let's click OK. Now, the next thing we want to do is come up to channels here on the layer kind of panel here. Come up to channels. Let's click on the red panel. Let's come up to filter. Let's go to stylize and then emboss. Now, this is going to look a bit weird for a moment, but in a moment, this I think is going to look fantastic. It's all going to make sense what we're doing. Let's go for the angle 180, and then we're going to do the actual green channel at 90 degrees, so it's going to look a little bit different. Height of one and a maximum amount there of 500%. Let's come down here to green. Let's do the same thing. Stylize and then uh, emboss. Let's make the angle 90%. And let's click OK. And now let's come up back up to the RGB channel. Let's go back to the layers. And what we're going to do now is we're going to click Edit. We're going to click Transform. And this is where you're going to see what we're actually doing here. Let's click Perspective. And let's drag these bottom corners out. Now, if I Alt, Hold, and use the mouse wheel, I can zoom out and drag these out even further. And you're going to see, once we're done with this, exactly what the plan is. Let's click the tick. And you can see this starts to look a little bit like rippling water. If it doesn't look enough like it, which it doesn't, to be fair, we can come back to perspective. Let's zoom out and let's just drag those bottom corners out even more. You can really drag them out pretty much as far as you like, to be honest. You really want to get that kind of rippled water effect. Let's click the tick. So we can just save this now. So let's save as and just put it somewhere where you're going to find it. So I'll put it in my photography folder. Uh, let's just call it water displacement. And you can close that file now. So we can now come into here. We can click our reflection layer down at the bottom there. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press Control J just to make another layer, just to copy it to make sure that we're, we're nice and safe. We're not going to ruin anything. Filter, we can come here to distort, displace, and we can leave that all as it is. 10, 10, stretch to fit. Now, once you double click that, it's just going to open that as a displacement map. And you can see it has made a massive difference to this puddle. Now, what we can do just to kind of make this even better is use this layer mask here for the smart filters to actually adjust the look of the puddle. So I'm going to do that now. I'm actually going to press Control I to make it all black. 
and then with a brush with white I'm just going to paint over where we've put the kind of droplets here uh, in fact do you know what I'm going to undo that I'm going to use a nice big soft brush and I'm just going to click once maybe click like that same over here same over here and that should kind of feather that out a little bit and now you know we've got a reasonably decent kind of look to our photo you might want to then go in and, and maybe adjust things for example i don't love this one over here this raindrop so i'm going to use a black brush to just get rid of that do the same on this layer mask here as well but otherwise i think that looks pretty decent that's one other way that you could go about actually creating kind of a water texture there now you might want to mess around with the blending style of the actual raindrops that we've put on there so for example multiply sometimes works quite well Darken might work better for you. Uh, we've used darker color, but you could definitely use darken. That's not, not a bad one at all to go for, but there's loads of different ways that you could kind of play around with that. But I think we've created a decent looking kind of image here. If we just save that, Control S, it's gonna actually save it back into Lightroom and we can continue editing if we want to. Otherwise, I think it's, it's a relatively straightforward, creative way to make a photo, which I think is really cool. Now, if you have any questions about anything we've done, pop them down in the comments. I appreciate this one's a little bit more abstract, and we'll get back to being outside soon because hopefully, hopefully, I believe that summer might come back. So we'll see. Otherwise, if you want to see anything in particular for a tutorial Tuesday, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your suggestions. Of course, I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.